Okay, so I've heard from you guys so far a line that's slanted or somebody said diagonal, right? Yes? There's some sort of number that goes with it is kind of what we're getting, yeah? To me, it looks like how many, how, how many boxes the line can fit into. Raise your hand if you think that the number has something to do with the graph that we've got it listed on right now. That's there to help us for sure, yeah. Uh, it seems like it has something to do with like the y coordinate being divided by the x. Okay, I'm going to write that in. Y divided by x. We'll talk a little bit more. I want to get more hands and then I'll start doing my thing. I think it's the y intercept. I don't see any axes on here. Um, right? So, like if we're looking at a coordinate plane where we've got our x and y and we can see the origin with the zero, graphs cross the axis. We, we were doing that when we were playing our Desmos game yesterday, right? But in this case, I don't see any that are axes. Although sometimes knowing what the y or x-intercept is can tell you what the coordinates are. Great connection to what we were doing yesterday. David? Uh, I think like, I think what you're doing is connecting the idea of slope <coughs> to the video that we watched about positive and negative slope. Am I right? Yeah. So right now with your pen or highlighter, above where the word slope is, let's put slope dude's journey. And yes, the, the video is funny because we do the nice, negative, puff, puff, positive. But really, this is positive slope. Any line that starts in the bottom left and goes up to the right, that's a positive. <clears throat> Versus negative slopes start up on the left and they go down to the right. What do we call the kind of slope that goes straight across? Zero. And then what do we call it when it goes straight down? Whisper. Okay, so all of those things are true. I like that we had one person who connected it to the y divided by x. <clears throat> it can really be seen when we're dealing with this really long line, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But before we go on, I just want some labels on your graph here. What goes up and down, the y or the x? The y goes up and down, and what goes across? So when I think about slope and y over x, in my visual brain, I picture that y is something that goes up and down and x is something that goes across. We have a nickname for that. Do you guys remember what it is? Other way. It's rise over run. And equals rise over run. And we do have that slope equals this. M is equal to. Now the interesting thing is, in my seventh grade classes right now, we've been talking about proportional relationships. And they were also writing y over x. And it equaled a constant of k. That's the same thing as slope. They just haven't gotten to that point yet. So if you think about looking at this here, how much this is rising up and running over is the slope of this graph. This one's pretty steep, isn't it? Okay, so some other ideas we had. Um, it was mentioned that there's only one line on this graph that's negative, and it's right here. All of these other lines of slope that we see on this example page are all positive. And I think that this idea of y over x or rise over run is something we talk about a lot, but I want us to use this paper to really show it. And this is really what I wanted you to have a highlighter for. 
So if you have one color you've just done that with, you might want to share with a neighbor. Because we're going to show the rise over run. I'm going to start with a comment that was made by one of your classmates in second period algebra today. This person connected the y over x to the fact that these two are fractions. And your classmate was like, I was trying to figure out where the 1 over 2 came from, and I realized that this was 1 and this was 2, and that made this 1 over 2, and that that's where the y and the x were coming from. Do you guys see what that person was connecting? This is 1, and it's going up and which is the y-axis, right? And this is 2, and it's going across, which is the x-axis. So this 1 is the y, and this 2 is the x. Does that make sense when you see the visual? Let's try it with the 1 over 4. Here's the 1. Here's the 4. Because slope is, slope, slope, slope is rise over run or y over x, it's often a fraction, but not always. Every other slope on this page is a whole number. And so in second period, as people were coming out of their Halloween, I stayed up too late eating lots of candy, and then I had some for breakfast, and it's now second period, and I'm sort of awake. <laughs> They were like, yeah, that makes sense. But then I got the question, well, what about the one over here that's four? And there's two lines that they're saying are both four. It's a good question if it's still not making complete sense to you, right? Okay, well, this is four because this rises from this point to this. How many places? Four. And it runs over how much? One. So this isn't just four. It's four over an invisible one. Why is this also 4? If I do down to here, I get 4 from this place and up. But if I do this entire line stretch that's here, I get a bigger triangle, don't I? This goes from this point to this, 8. And from this point to this, how much? What is 8 over 2 equal to? 4. So this is just a longer version. And can I point out to you what are, what's true about these two lines? What's that thing? I see a couple people doing this with their hands. Yeah, these two are parallel. We'll actually get to that at the end of unit two. <clears throat> slope, if you've got the same slope, you have a parallel line. Because these two are parallel to each other, aren't they? Those green lines I first drew. So let's check. Is everything else that's there that's a whole number over an invisible one? Okay, this is two. And how far across does it go? One. This is also two. That doesn't look like two to me, though. It looks like four. And what do you notice here? Yeah, this is a 4 over 2. And look, there's another point on the line right there. Do you think I could make a smaller triangle? <clears throat> 2 up, 1 over. This is 3 up, and anytime you have a whole number for your slope, <clears throat> That whole number is your rise, and the run is going to be 1. If you have a whole number, that whole number is your y, the distance between two points on your graph, and the x is 1. So what's true about this negative 3? It's the same as this one, just opposite. This is positive, and this one is there's my three, there's my one.
who's feeling a little bit better about how to define slope. Even if you can't like in words put it into what the official definition, is it making more sense? What questions do you have before we move on? No questions? Okay, turn your paper over. I am going to make you do this on your own. Match the slopes at the bottom to the lines. There is one extra. Draw a line to match it. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes, and then we will come back and compare our work. Okay. 